Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Revenant and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Mutant Year Zero. Now, last time, we completed the tutorial, which means we're about to get into the meat of the campaign. We're going to start seeing more complex areas and more powerful opponents, so uh, things are definitely going to get a little more challenging. Oh, but uh, as usual, I should note that I am taking part in the affiliate program for Mutant Year Zero, so if you're planning to pick up a copy of the game for yourself, feel free to use the uh, discount code in the pinned comment below. Now, we could actually head south, but uh, obviously, that area is well beyond our current level. Instead, we'll start heading north to see if we can find where Hammond is headed, which of course means our next stop is the High Road. The deeper part of the forest hides the entrance to something large. Campfires are visible on the looming mountainside. It's interesting to note that there are actually two directions we can go from there. The underpass is uh, obviously where we're supposed to go, because it points right to our current destination. But we've also got this over here, which looks like a crashed cargo helicopter. We'll head up to the high road for now, but uh, then we'll probably branch off to check out that helicopter before we continue our search for Hammond. All right, let's get our bearings here. Nothing in sight, so uh, let's walk the perimeter. Oh man, we've never been this far from the Ark before. Talk about undiscovered country, huh? You think we finally left the ghouls behind? Yeah, me neither. It is worth noting that uh, the character you currently have selected will be the one who does the talking while you're exploring the zone. I actually like Duck's snarky attitude, but if you'd rather hear from Borman or one of our other party members, be sure to let me know in the uh, comments below. My brain must be rotting. Is that a beautiful woman I see before me? Wait, I know that beautiful woman. She's a stalker. Interesting. Stay right there. Who are you? You're Selma, right? You're a mutant like us, on Hammond's team. Do I owe you money? No. Did I kill your brother? No. Then Selma I am. Who are you? I'm Ducks, and he's Borman. Hello? Like the only walking duck and boar in the whole arc? Come on. That's funny. I think you've mistaken me for someone who gives a duck. I've got to catch up to Hammond before it's too late. You're part of Hammond's crew. How did you get separated? It was weird. We were all hearing strange voices, not from the zone, in our heads. And that's when the ghouls ambushed us. After the fight, I was somehow blinded, paralyzed. I could barely move. I told Hammond I'd catch up to him when it wore off. Two long, rough days. But I'm better now. He headed up north to a crash site to find some metal ship. Says it was sent from... Eden, I know. Do you believe him? If Hammond thinks there's an Eden, there's an Eden. Believe me. You guys are trying to find him too? And we can work together. This is insane. You want to go more north? Into Ghoul Central? They'll kill us. A lot of ghouls have tried to kill me, but I'm still here. So, am I part of your team or what? Well, welcome aboard, Selma. That's our first new companion, so uh, let's see what we're working with here. First up, looks like Selma's got seven mutation points to spend. I'm assuming she was uh, automatically matched to our party's current level. She's also got her own unique assortment of mutations. There is a little bit of overlap, but at a glance, it's pretty obvious she's intended to be a sniper and grenadier. Let's go ahead and uh, start her off with super tendons. 
That'll help her get to elevated positions a little easier. We'll also grab Tree Hugger here, which is pretty fantastic for crowd control. As for equipment, she starts with an ancient pistol, which is actually our second silenced weapon. She's also got a Molotov cocktail, but uh, let's give her a proper grenade. She's also going to need something a little heavier than a silenced pistol, so we'll toss her Borman's old shotgun for once the uh, real fighting begins. Now, uh, let's double back real quick, just to uh, make sure we didn't miss anything near the entrance. Ah, there we go. You definitely don't want to miss any weapon parts. That's where we came in, so I think we're done here. Let's head back to Selma's camp. Alright, let's begin exploring the next area, but we will have to stay on our toes. The area description did mention multiple campfires. Oh, geez. Okay. Looks like we've got something up on top of the cliff. Looks like a ghoul, but it's hard to say for sure. Ah, and uh, that's obviously how we get up there. That must be the uh, high road that the area is named after. And then this path over here clearly leads to the optional area. Well, well, well. Look what we have here. Am I a grade-A stalker or what? You see this hidden path through the forest? You mean the uh, clearly marked path with the giant yellow sign? Yes, I do see that. What the? Really? <laughs> none of you, none of you thought that was odd. <laughs> You're clearly all grade A stalkers. That said, I'm actually pretty sure that thing was headed in the same direction we are. Hmm. Evacuation Guidelines Evacuation Route D1, Hoga Only bring essential items. Non-essential items will not be loaded onto ferries. Warm, waterproof clothing, ready-to-eat tinned or dried foods, basic tools, medicine, first aid supplies, no pets, no personal items that will not fit into a shoebox. And then there's a list of what I'm assuming are real-world locations in Sweden. I'm not even going to pretend I can pronounce those. I think you get the idea. Okay, now, I do want to investigate that helicopter, but, um, let's head up top first, see what we're up against. I don't think we want Rodhead over there to call his buddies. Let's stay hidden. What, the uh, guy on the street lamp, or am I missing something here? Honestly, it looks pretty clear. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's more ghouls, and uh, wow, they really ramped up their toughness. Nothing we can't handle, though. Fortunately, now that we've got a second silenced weapon, we should be able to take this guy out quietly. As long as no one misses. 
<laughs> yeah. Nicely done. Follow me. Actually, we just got a level up, so uh, let's boost Selma's health. She's going to end up in a lot of positions where her allies can't heal her, so we probably want to make sure she can take a few hits. Alright, let's see who else is waiting for us. That's a hunter up top. Oh, and uh, that's our first med bot. Man, both of these guys have way too many hit points for a stealth kill. Well, maybe this will help. Gladiator armor. Two armor, two hit points. Wearer is immune to critical hits. Lightly padded defensive clothing used during ancient gladiatorial stick fighting tournaments. These duels were often staged upon ice to increase participants' chance of injury or death. Chronicler Dentis. <laughs> you know what? I really can't disagree with that assessment. Anyway, that's a pretty solid armor upgrade, so let's immediately give that to Borman. He's got a pretty in-your-face combat style, so he's definitely going to need it. Then we'll give the uh, Stalker armor to Selma. Like I said, it's important that she can take a few hits. Now, let's sneak back around to the other side. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Hey! You on the truck! Ugly face! You see anything out there? No! There's nothing out there! It's the zone! And stop calling me ugly face! Look at your face! I can't look at my face, it's my face! Now put your eyes out there and look for intruders! Okay, so we've got a shaman and a second hunter. That is a problem. Alright, let's back off for a moment. I need to think about this one. Hmm. I think our best bet is to uh, try to take out that hunter on top of the container. Then we can use it as cover against the rest of the ghouls. We just need to wait until he's right up against one of the edges. There we go. All right, let's do this. First things first, let's get Selma up there. She can do some pretty serious damage with that scatter gun. We'll want to keep her behind cover, of course. Oh, wow. I don't think he knows we're here. If we can actually crit on this guy, then we might be able to take him out in two shots. Got nice. Very nice. Okay, let's get Borman up there and uh, he can finish this guy off. We definitely need this to hit, so uh, we'll use Run and Gun to get up to point blank range. Mutation cooldowns. Some mutations lock once used and require a set number of enemy kills to unlock. That's a basic mechanic that's obviously intended to prevent you from spamming special abilities. It's a little artificial, but you do get used to it. Goodbye. That actually went a lot better than I expected. Oh. 
that medbot is going to head straight for the fallen hunter, so uh, let's see if Ducks can shoot its kneecaps off. Bingo. Well, we hit, but I don't think we actually immobilized it. Affirmative. He's lying, entering sleep mode. Deal with that one now! Getcha! Right, reinforcements. Man, I was really hoping the reinforcements would be weaker ghouls. I mean, these guys are weaker, relatively speaking, but uh, they're still tougher than I'd like. Of course, they're also clustered pretty close together, so uh, let's have Selma lock them down. In fact, now that they can't move, let's go ahead and light them on fire, too. Thanks to that upgrade we got from Prips, these guys should burn to death pretty quickly. Now, we don't have to worry about those guys for a while, but we do still have this medbot, and uh, he's trying to revive that hunter we took out. He's too heavily armored for us to take out in a single turn, but uh, fortunately, we should be able to disrupt his healing ability by hitting him with Borman shotgun. Yep, that'll do it. As for Ducks, he can't do much damage to that robot with his current weapon, so uh, we'll have him focus on those reinforcements instead. They will burn to death in a few turns, but uh, we should probably expedite the process. That had to hurt. Your injuries have been attended to. State further medical needs. Okay. Alright, the uh, reinforcements will burn to death next turn, but uh, they're also on overwatch, so we can't risk moving around too much. Let's stay focused on these other guys for now. Starting with that medbot, of course. He's trying to revive that hunter again. These guys are interesting. I think they will actually try to attack you, but only if there's no one left for them to revive. As long as we can keep him distracted, he'll just keep trying to heal that hunter. Though, uh, obviously at this point he's almost dead. Now, we can't afford to move Selma, but uh, we also don't want to waste our attack on one of those reinforcements. Let's see if we can get a line of sight on someone else. Yeah, that'll do. That hunter is getting awfully close to flanking us. Give me some. Oh, there's a uh, light flesh wound. Thank goodness we gave Borman that gladiator armor. Okay, at this point we pretty much won the fight, but these guys can still do some pretty serious damage, so uh, let's make sure we're hugging cover. Now let's finish off that medbot. We've lost one. 
Wow. That was a uh, pretty brutal death. I feel kind of bad about that. Nice, that'll definitely help. Oh, the pig! No sweat on it! Ah, and uh, there's a minor hit on Selma. Nothing to worry about just yet, but still, that's annoying. Though the uh, shaman has put himself in an interesting position. We might actually be able to flank him there. Oh, but uh, we'll have to take care of that hunter first. Oh, does that hurt? Well, the uh, hunter's done for. Let's go after the shaman. Oh, uh. <laughs> I guess I should have paid more attention to that Overwatch symbol. Turned out okay, though. Donut. Oh, very nice. Thanks to that crit, we should be able to finish off the Shaman this turn. Well, we took a couple of flesh wounds, but uh, otherwise, nicely done. Okay, back me up. <gasps> okay, let's check our mutation points real quick. Nothing we can do just yet, but Borman is getting pretty close to unlocking Hog Rush. Okay, so this is not spooky at all. Walking through a graveyard. Fantastic. Hmm. No loot from the reinforcements, but uh, I think you still get experience for killing them. I'll have to double check that later. Okay, that's obviously the entrance to the next area, but we don't want to head that way just yet. Let's double back and uh, check out that hidden path. They, uh, they really make that sound painful. All right, we might still have enemies here, so let's proceed with caution. Ah, okay, we've got another zone dog. This thing's a little tougher than the last one we fought, but um, we should be able to take it out quietly. Oh, okay, we've got another zone dog right across the way. Well, hopefully it won't notice us uh, killing its buddy. That had to hurt. Whoops. <laughs> that, uh, you did it, kid. That's clearly not what I meant to do, but you know what? That's fine. We'll just set Borman up to receive the charge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that thing's too far away to attack us. Overwatch.
No luck on the Overwatch, but we've got this. smoother but turned out just fine over here okay three more fights before we can get moth wings for ducks and I am tempted to grab thrower for Selma but um we'll just save her points for now ah but we can pick up hog rush for Borman like I said before that's easily one of the best mutations in the game it also means we'll have uh, three crowd control moves, so that'll make some of the future fights a lot easier to handle. Alright, let's take a look around. a flea market with this junk. Look at these weird machines. Where do you think they come from? What, the, uh, the playground? I guess it makes sense they wouldn't recognize a playground. Not much time for play in the post-apocalypse. do we have here? Aristo hat. 20% critical chance from high ground. An ancient headpiece that offers little to no protection, probably used to increase the height of shorter individuals in an attempt to raise social standing. Chronicler Maddox. Interesting. Well, we uh, could give that to ducks, I think it would look pretty great on him, but we're currently building Selma to be our designated sniper, so let's give it to her instead. I guess we should uh, restock our grenades, too. Alright, moving on. Elder Almighty, I've seen some crazy shit in the zone, but this takes the bullet. This house must have belonged to some small people. I mean, small, small. That is just the weirdest. Yeah, things were pretty weird before the war. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's start heading for the exit over there. Angel. After picking up a low frequency signal from some kind of ancient crash site, you realize that this might also be a great source of scrap and other valuables. That certainly sounds promising. Let's have a look around.
So I was talking to Iridia, and she told me about this ancient machine she had seen out in the zone, not too far from here. She said it looked like it had fallen from the sky, crashed into the ground, and it spread more than enough scrap around for us. Yeah, there seem to be an awful lot of things falling from the sky lately. I didn't sign up to hunt some ghoul looters. This is ridiculous, they're everywhere. I'm not actually seeing anything just yet. Ah, there we go. That's uh, actually a weaker ghoul. We can take him out in one shot. Damn, I'm good. Ah, uh, sorry about that. I think I skipped some dialogue there. Come on. Basically, these guys are uh, stealing scrap from their boss, the gray one. Let me ask you guys something. Is that a metal man working in there? Like, a man made out of metal? Ducks, we just killed one of those things like 20 minutes ago. Then again, these guys are pretty weak. I'm getting the distinct impression that we were supposed to come here first. There are a decent number of them though, including what looks to be our first pyro and chief. Let's back off for a moment and, uh, oh, let's uh, grab that artifact. Whoa, whoa, okay, there's a, there's a few more of them than I thought. Let's thin these guys out a little. Sorry about that. Now that was a good kill. Oh, nice. Meridia has new items for sale, too. That's definitely worth checking out. Regroup. Let's grab that artifact, and uh, then I think we'll head back to the Ark real quick. Hipster Fruit Tester. Power brick that has an image of fruit etched on one side and continuously displays a flashing power battery icon on the other. This was used to determine the ripeness of fruits. Chroniclers say that this device had a secondary music playing function, which required some earpieces to be attached to it. Chronicler Hippocantus. There's an image of a rot pair. This looks like uh, a testing contraption for fruit. I heard stories about singing fruit that could make music. Is this somehow related? Why the hell would anybody need to test fruit? You either eat it or you slay it at some bozo's head. A bozo like you. I don't know. That one seems like a bit of a stretch, guys. What does fruit have to do with music? Alright guys, we're past the 30 minute mark at this point, so uh, let's go ahead and hit the pause button here. I'll head back to the Ark to uh, do some general bookkeeping, and we'll pick up here next time as we take on another pack of ghouls and uh, investigate the Fallen Angel. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Mutant Year Zero, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, or the store page over on Steam. As always, links are in the description. <laughs>